24th of November 2023. So the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Jesus Christ, the real Jesus, the real God, the kingdom of God, Jesus, Yahweh, is advancing. God is moving us forward. The real sense is that as you submit to God, resist the devil, your roots in God, so to speak, go deeper. And as a branch in the vine, a branch in the cultivated vine, a branch in the cultivated olive tree, it's God who's chosen you. God who's broken a branch of your life off from Whatever you were rooted into, the world, obviously, before you're born of God, you were just another person, a product of this world, under every spirit of this world, as everybody is, until they choose to become born of God, by their choice, at whatever age. And God, who knows the end from the beginning, he knows who he created, and he created you good. God created you good as a human being, a human spirit, and he created you as a good spirit, a good human spirit, and you were put into the cluster of cells in your mother's womb like everybody else every human being, apart from Adam and Eve, of course, who God created out of the dust. And God did it that way. But of course, after the fall, sinful nature came into the world and procreation was the way of reproducing life, recreating life through the womb. And every child coming into this world the spirit of that child was created by God before you came into the womb. God knew you. <coughs> Excuse me. Before you were formed in the womb, God says, I knew you. Just like Jeremiah. And Jeremiah was just an ordinary person like us. All the characters of the Old Testament who we know and love as historical characters, God has used them to teach us so much. Jesus Christ came, fully human, but fully God, the Holy Spirit, within his human body. Jesus had a human mind, a human soul, human emotions, human will, in that sense of choosing, he had free will to choose to obey God the Father or not. But he very quickly understood by the time he was 12 years old that who he was was the Son of God. Not a son, small s, but the very Son of God who came into this world through a virgin, not born from a human being, not impregnated the egg was not impregnated by joseph jesus did not have sinful nature no more than adam who was created the first adam he was created not to have sinful nature and that nature came to him when he sinned when he rebelled against god he sinned he did the thing that god told him not to do you can eat of any tree in this, in this uh, paradise garden, but not that one. Do not eat of that tree or you will die, God told Adam. And all Adam had to do was obey. And of course you know the story, the fall of man. But Jesus Christ was not created. Jesus Christ was not created his Spirit was God the Holy Spirit. Father, Son, Holy Spirit within a human being. And how can 
God the Father be in the Son at the same time as being in heaven? Well, of course, God, Spirit, is omnipresent. God is everywhere. In this world, not of this world, and in the universe, not of the universe, God is beyond the universe. And, and, and I explained it to some young people, some teenagers in a coffee bar somewhere, about the infinity of God himself is the infinite, uncreated creator who has created this universe, the physical. And I said, imagine a balloon being blown up and it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and it's expanding. And what's it expanding into? One said, nothing. There's nothing beyond the universe. But of course there is some thing beyond this universe, someone, God. And if you imagine the balloon has hands around the balloon, and no, how, no matter how big the balloon is, the hands of God are infinite. In fact, the Bible says no, no one is too short for God's arm to reach them. And God can reach down from beyond this universe, heaven, and reach and pluck somebody out of the grave. And that's what his words did for me. Plucks me out of the grave of third degree Freemasonry when I was 33 years old. Plucked me out from death, the grave, darkness, when Jesus shouted down from heaven a, a place outside me, heaven wasn't in me, the kingdom of heaven wasn't within me, the king of heaven shouted down into the darkness, you're in with the wrong lot. Only it was a shout. And I instantly agreed with God, yes I am, and I shuddered, and I knew absolutely a hundred percent i was in with the wrong lot but trapped trapped in darkness trapped behind a closed door trapped in a box without windows within a box within a box trapped in a movement trapped in a false brotherhood that no one could get me out of and fear kept me trapped in it in the darkness as a third degree master mason. But if you know my testimony, two months later, Billy Graham came all the way from America for his last mission in the UK, Mission England. And Norwich, UK was one of the chosen cities. And, and Billy Graham said to the church leaders in Norwich, you must unite and pray together for the, for the prodigal sheep to come to this meeting and when Billy Graham was assured by the church leaders of all the major towns and cities there weren't that many yes we will pray unitedly for the lost sheep 1984 June was my time my last chance to go forward and to commit my life the rest of my entire life on earth to the will of God the Father in Jesus the Son and in the Holy Spirit, 39 years ago. The kingdom of God is advancing. Today I have been on my own. I met uh, this morning in a local cafe in our neighborhood, a, a lovely, let's call them a Christian group, true believers in the true Christ, uh, someone who's in leadership of that group, somebody, Trevor, I've known for many, many years, who I regard as someone who is born of God, does have the Holy Spirit, is sensitive to the Holy Spirit, someone who gets me, understands me, about where I've been, where I am now, has has understood my journey. So praise God for that person, praise God for the group, Praise God for the venue, which is a worldly place. And we have to be very, very, very careful what 
our conversation is about. And there are things that we can't discuss. The unmentionable sin, which if you mention in public, those who are caught up in that sin become active enemies against us being allowed into buildings. And the enemy wants us to be banned from all these worldly cafes and even the so-called Christian commercial cafes, the same principle. The same principle. The spirit of this world is upon this world. But then the spirit of the world is on many churches and denominations are caving in to the pressure to conform to the pattern of this world. And that's all about diversity and equality, human rights. And I've said it before, listen very, very intently where you go on a Sunday Listen very intently where you go on a Sunday to see what words they use in the preaching and the teaching and even the songs. And if you are attentive, see if they mention Jesus, mention the blood of the Lamb, mention repentance, mention forgiveness, mention eternal life, mention born again and mention the baptism with the Holy Spirit. These are key signs whether that particular local church is actually in the Holy Spirit or not. And they might be performing all the right songs, preaching about all the right heroes of the Old Testament, even making mention of New Testament issues, even talking about Jesus, but if it comes across as some religious social club and all they're doing is reminding their membership that they're Christian. But there's no challenge about growth, no challenge about change, no sense of the journey is continuing that we must keep shunning evil. And without mentioning the unmentionable sin that we can't mention in public, everybody knows that all sin is the same. And when you're preaching against sin, you can use an illustration to talk about the unmentionable sin. And you could use an illustration like a parable, like it's an addiction. And you can talk about sin, and anybody who knows, knows what you're talking about. The unmentionable sin is the same as every other sin. And the reason we can't mention it, because the spirit of this age, this fallen age, is falling over itself backwards. The world it wants to be politically correct in this woke generation to denounce any sense that there is sin, there is wrong, there is depravity, there is perversity, and I'm not even spelling that out. Immorality is immorality, and it's not just about the sexual immorality. Immorality is a word, if you look it up. There is morality, morality, and immorality. There is good and there is evil. And who's defining which is which? Well, God, of course, has made it very clear. The Bible is very, very, very clear about what is good and what is evil, what is right and what is wrong, what is holiness and what is sinfulness. The Holy Spirit has been given Every generation, the Holy Spirit is poured out on all people, male and female, rich and poor, young and old. Dreams and visions are given. There is no excuse for anybody to not know there is a God who loves them. No excuse whatsoever. 
You know, the stories of, of people in other religions, they're open spiritually to religious spirits that govern their religions in their religious countries. But Jesus visits these people in their dreams and they see a figure dressed in white. And this figure dressed in white speaks to them and tells them things. And these people go to their local leaders of the religion and they they share their dreams and and these leaders of religion they know who Jesus is they know about the historical Jesus they know the teachings from Jesus they know what Christians believe about the Jesus the Lord the Messiah there is evidence about what Jesus said did how he lived his life. And people have dreams about Jesus. And they become saved because faith comes from hearing God. And God is not silent. God will not be silenced. And you need to really understand that if you're running churches and you're not allowing God to speak in prophecy, even one-to-one -one even one-to-one -one from people who are not your church members, they're not part of your social club, they're not your workers, they're not your salaried workers or your paid wages, they're not your voluntary workers. The members of the body of Christ are members of the body of Christ. And where is Jesus? He's in us, the body of Christ. And I keep defining it by a set phrase. Christ's holy living, true, obedient ambassadors and disciples, the body of Christ, the one body of the one Christ. There is one true church throughout this world, the one body of the one Christ, not an organization. People are starting to talk about the body of Christ using the phrase, the body of Christ. And you'll see in the notes attached to this video, there is a ministry which has emerged. Somebody sent me a link to it. I, I checked it out and it seems okay until you realize it is a spirit promoting women into positions of authority in the churches. But the Holy Spirit is not elevating women above men or men above women. That some women think it's about authority it's about the Holy Spirit Holy Spirit breathes scripture the Bible which hasn't changed and will not change it's about order not chaos it's about structure in the Holy Spirit not the world the pattern of Christ is not the pattern of this world it's absolutely diametrically opposite. You need to get to know Jesus Christ all over again, some of you, from the Gospels. Look how he, quotes, ran his church of 12. Not an organization. Every day, one day of salvation at a time, he led his group the disciples, on a journey of discovery. One day of salvation at a time. And what were they discovering? The will of God the Father. People turned up in their life. In extreme occasions, the woman who was bleeding for 12 years touched Jesus, the hem of his garment, who touched me. And the disciples said, they're all touching you, Lord. But this woman had faith that if she could just touch the hem of his garment, she would be healed. And that faith from God the Father brought healing to her through the Son, the only begotten Son, God's Spirit. At work in Jesus the man, God healed the woman instantly. The bleeding stopped. So it's down for us, the body of Christ. We're not Jesus, we're not the Holy Spirit, we're not God the Father, by no means. Call no man father 
except your Father in heaven. The kingdom of heaven is within us. So if you're not sure what I'm saying, then it's time for you to be born again and baptized with the Holy Spirit, and he, the Holy Spirit, will teach you everything I'm telling you. The journey continues. The kingdom of God is advancing. We're moving forward in Christ, heavenwards in Christ, upwards in Christ, and we're leaving our past behind. Today is a new day. Yesterday is gone. New wineskins are receiving new wine today. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about tomorrow. Yes, we all plan for tomorrow, next week. Trevor and I are planning to go to a market town in East Anglia, just north of London. And we're going to reach out with the gospel. And we're going to be led by the Holy Spirit. We're planning to go tomorrow. But it's always God willing. God willing. There, there will be a tomorrow. There will be a next week. There will be a next month. One day of salvation at a time. Jesus knew that one the day would come he'd be lifted up. And that day came at the third Passover in Jerusalem, the Last Supper. Jesus knew this was his Last Supper. And you know the story. You know the story. So, Father, we thank you, Lord God Almighty. We thank you, Father, that you sent your only begotten Son. We thank you, Jesus, that you obeyed the Father's will even unto death. And you suffered fully as a man. Your soul was in great anguish, agony. And you physically were in agony as well. And the separation came when you became sin of the world, Jesus. You became my sin. And, and the Spirit of God, the Father, the Father had to look away from you because you became sin. And the separation was there, right there on the cross. And you cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And you knew the absence of your father. And you suffered. You bled and died in agony. And finally you said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And, and unforgiveness, Lord, is a sin. And you died with no sin of your own. And we pray for all those today who don't forgive us. They don't forgive us. They harbour things against us. Malice, gossip, slander, backbiting, malicious talk, unforgiveness, grudges, vengefulness, spite all these things that are in our past that they they these people hold against us and we cry out father forgive them they know not what they do we pray for them today lord that today will be their day of salvation that they will find you jesus as savior and they will leave every every semblance of false christianity they will leave the cults the sex, the factions, the groups within the groups within the groups. They will leave their positions of power and authority and that they will humble themselves and they will kneel down at the cross and recognize Jesus. You died for all of us. That they will truly be born again. And once born again, Lord, they will receive the Holy Spirit, eternal life, forgiveness of sins. But they will want to be baptized with the fire of the Holy Spirit as in that first day of Pentecost. And we trust you, Jesus. We trust you, Father, that you're going to guide us on this path of righteousness. And it's all for your namesake, for your plan, your purpose, Father. And we commit ourselves into your hands our spirit, our soul, and our bodies, Father, in Christ, in the Holy Spirit, one day of salvation at a time. And we're praying for you, brethren of the one God, 
my one siblings in Christ. And I thank you, we thank you for your prayers for us. My wife and I, Trevor and I, and whosoever is born of God in this city, Norwich, UK and beyond, that we are in the one body of Christ throughout this world. God bless you. Keep in touch by the comments. And let's keep praying for one another because we know Jesus is coming soon. And we must prepare ourselves. We must be ready. Look forward. Forget the former things. Isaiah 43, 18 to 21. We'll leave it there. God bless you.